You didn't expect me to. Yeah, yeah, I was there. MashaAllah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and please inshallah تعالى accept my apologies and I was very excited to see my father present in the masjid. And uh, I had to introduce him to you guys. I said, Khalas, this is an opportunity. Dad is here. Alhamdulillah, he's visiting. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve all of our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with Jannat al firdaus al ala. Allahumma ameen. And dear brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, having parents, and uh, having the opportunity to, to be with your parents, with mom and dad, and alhamdulillah, having their guidance and advice and uh, is, is something very important, subhanallah. And it's a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, accept from our parents all the good deeds that they have done. Allahumma ameen. And dear brothers and sisters in Islam, <coughs> Inshallah ta'ala, tonight we have an appointment with a great, great, great companion. Tonight we will be beginning uh, the, uh, the series of lectures and uh, that will be talking about the Khulafa al-Rashidun and the four rightly guided Khulafa, the Caliphs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this Ummah with. And we are going to begin with the great Companion, the greatest of all of them, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. It is not going to be fair for me to talk about the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in just one session. Alhamdulillah, we have gathered in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reconnect with the companions. Recently, a few days ago, a brother from our masjid, from Masjid al-Furqan, a young, a young brother, Talib Ilm, He's not here with us right now. He's seeking the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recently had a breakfast. We had uh, breakfast together. And uh, one of the questions he asked me was the following. He said, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, if I want to kind of better my, for example, if I want to improve my character and be better than I am right now, and what, what would you advise me? And I said to him, this is the advice I gave him. I said to him, if you want to uh, better your character and you, be, you want to be better than you are right now, you should uh, look up to the righteous predecessors. You should read about their lives. You should read about them and you should read about how they were and uh, learn from them. And, uh, and subhanAllah, try to imitate them and try and be like them. And I told him to read Surah Min Hayat al Sahaba. You know, learn the lives of the companions, the, the, their biographies, mashallah, the ulama, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them. They have preserved for us the lives and the biographies of the great companions, such as Abu Bakr and the rest of them. And inshallah ta'ala, tonight, we're going to have an appointment with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And I want to remind myself and all of you, I want you just to imagine this scenario. I want you to imagine... The day, inshallah ta'ala, when all of us will be from the, when, when, when we will all be, inshallah ta'ala, from the residents of Jannah. Imagine you are in Jannah. And for the first time, you're about to meet the companions. And you're going to be introduced to one of the companions. This is companion such and such. Imagine if you have been introduced to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr tells you like, I am Abu Bakr, a Siddiq. And if you didn't know a lot about his life. Are you, gonna have, are you gonna have a long conversation with him or are you gonna have a very short conversation with him? You're gonna have a very short conversation with him. But the more you know about him, what's gonna happen? The longer conversation that you can have with him. You know someone, when you meet someone new, as long as you have something in common, you'll be able to talk to each other longer and longer. 
Imagine now when you sit down with Abu Bakr and you're not pressed for time. You're not pressed for time. Because in Jannah, we're not going to say, oh, how many hours have I got left? Okay, I've got another appointment. No, 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 no. You're not going to have that worry at all. Subhanallah, there's no limit to the time. Subhanallah. You can, you can be there. You will be there forever. And you will not be restricted by time. And imagine you're sitting with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and talking to him. And the more you know about his life, the more you are able to connect with him. Subhanallah. And, and talk to him and so forth. And also the other companions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us the greatness of these people. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said when it comes to the companions, Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to begin tonight with a statement made by Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala. What did Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala have said? I'm very pleased to see, mashallah, parents who are sitting in this gathering. I'm very pleased to see parents who have also their children with them. And I, I'm also so happy to see young brothers and hopefully young sisters who are downstairs maybe listening to this talk. And look at Ibn al-Jawzi what he said. Ibn al-Jawzi has said, anna salaf kanu يعلمون أولادهم حب أبي بكر وعمر كما يعلمونهم السور من القرآن. ابن الجوزي رحمه الله تعالى has said this great imam has said the salaf the righteous predecessors we're talking about the tabi'een and the young companions and so forth they used to teach their own kids like the children what did they used to teach them they used to teach them the love of Abu Bakr and Umar. We have to love Abu Bakr and Umar. If we don't have love for Abu Bakr and Umar, our iman is not complete. Subhanallah. We have to love these people. And if we don't love them, our iman is not complete. Because also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, the person who doesn't love Abu Bakr and Umar, that person is a munafiq. Only the munafiqs would hate Abu Bakr and Umar. Subhanallah. So look at Ibn al what he said, أَنَّ السَّلَفْ كَانُ يُعَلِّمُونَ أَوْلَادَهُمْ حب أبي بكر وعمر كما يعلمونهم السور من القرآن. And look at Sheikh Al Islam also what he said. He said أما الخلفاء الراشدون والصحابة فكل خير فيه المسلمون إلى يوم القيامة من الإيمان والإسلام والقرآن والعلم والمعارف والعبادات ودخول الجنة والنجاة من النار وانتصار على الكفر. All the things he said. Look at what he said. And Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. He said as for the rightly guided caliphs, the companions. Every good that Muslims possess as Muslims today, every khayr that we have, he said, everything that we possess, all the khayr that we possess until the day of judgment, such as like the iman that we have, the Islam that we have, the Quran that we have, the knowledge that we have, the understanding that we have, the acts of worship that we have. Some people enter in paradise, being saved from the hellfire, their victory over the disbelievers and the exaltation of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by virtue of what? By virtue of the, the blessings of what the companions did and what they, convey, when they, what they conveyed in terms of the religion and also strived in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have done so much and amazing stuff for all of us. The, the great companions. So we want to know who Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is to begin with. Abu Bakr, most of us, we know him as Abu Bakr. But his real name is not Abu Bakr. His real name is Abdullah ibn Uthman. Abu Bakr, his real name is Abdullah ibn Uthman. Do you know what we're going to do tonight? Inshallah ta'ala, this is the format that we're going to use for this lesson. The format of the lesson is going to be like this. And I'll be talking about the, this great, these great companions. And then maybe the last five, ten minutes. I am going to give you the, uh, the, wireless, the wireless mic. And then each and every one of you, anyone who has, inshallah ta'ala, uh, some sort of reflection. Okay? If there is a way that you have reconnected with Abu Bakr, you can share that with us. So inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to give you the mic. The mic is going to be passed around, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe three, four, five, five brothers, we might be able to fit them in. And then you, so if you listen Attentively right now when we talk about Abu Bakr and inshallah ta'ala, you try and extract some sort of a lesson from the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and then later on you can share that with us and say, this is how it, it relates to me. I want to relate to this story. Subhanallah, the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So Abu Bakr, his name is Abdullah. Also, it was said his name was Atiq. Why was he given the name Atiq? Some of the ulama, they have said Atiq it was not his real name, but it was his laqab. A title that was given to him. Also, it was said, Atiq, many people knew him as Atiq. More than they knew him, the name that his parents have given him. The name that his parents have given him was Abdullah, according to some of the ulama. And Aisha radiallahu anha herself, 
the daughter of Abu Bakr, she has said, the name that was given to my father was Abdullah by the family. And also he was known as Atiq. Allah gave him a very beautiful face. Abu Bakr was handsome when it comes to his looks. And that's why he was called the name or was given the nickname Atiq. Also, it was said that he was given the name Atiq because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed him from the, hell, from the hellfire. Also, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he knew the, lineon, the, line, uh, the, 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 the lineage, okay? The, the, the knowledge of knowing the lineage of the, of the people or the genealogy of the people and better than anybody else, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And in terms of his color, the complexion, and when it comes to Abu Bakr, and this was his complexion, and in terms of like the color, and, 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 and for example, how he looked like, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was fair skinned. He was thin with his slender shoulders, a veined face, deep set eyes as well, a prominent forehead. And he used to dye his gray hair with hinna and katam. Also it was said, Aisha radiallahu anha has said, no one's father from the Muhajirun accepted Islam. No one who is from the Muhajirun, from the immigrants of the companions, has become a Muslim except the father of Abu Bakr. This was one of the things that was unique about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He, he was the only one who had his father a Muslim, subhanAllah. The rest of the companions who, who made hijrah to the Prophet sallallahu and went to Medina, their parents were not Muslims. Their fathers, their fathers were not Muslims. So right now, as we can see Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, how he looked like. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was a family man. He got married to four wives. He got married to four wives, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Some of the wives that he was married to, he married them before the, before the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Before the Prophet became the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his first wife, his first, his, his first wife that he got married to, she was the mother of Abdullah and Asma. Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr and Asma bin Abi Bakr. Their mother was the first wife that Abu Bakr was married to. But she did not become a Muslim. She didn't become a Muslim. And also, and Abu Bakr was married to Umm Ruman. Umm Ruman. Umm Ruman bin Amir. And she was the mother of and, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha and Abdurrahman. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had two children with the first wife. The second wife, Umm Ruman, he also had two children with her, Abdurrahman and Aisha, radiallahu anhuma. And also after that, Abu Bakr got married to Asma bint Umais. Asma bint Umais was the wife of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, when he passed away in Medina, then after that, Abu Bakr got married to her. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him through her, his son Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. So far we have mentioned how many children Five children. Also, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he got married to an, another wife, Habiba bin Tukharija ibn Zayd. And she was from the Ansar, from Medina. So he got married to her and she has given birth to his child, Umm Kalthum. Okay, the youngest child of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So in total, Abu Bakr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with six, six children. Three boys and three daughters. In total. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with. So what we are going to do, inshallah ta'ala, what we are going to do tonight is we are going to visit and, and remind ourselves some of the things, the amazing things, like what we know about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and regarding his life. Inshallah ta'ala, that's what we are going to look at tonight in the light ta'ala. So among the things that we are going to look at is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when was he born? He was born just a couple of years after the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was younger than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by two to three years maximum. And then him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were the best of friends. Before the Prophet Sallallahu became a prophet, they were very close. Even their characteristics, their personalities were very similar. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was described by his wife Khadija, I mean, when the Prophet Sallallahu was described by his wife Khadija radiallahu anha, and she said to him, you are like this young Ya, Rasul, ya, ya Muhammad, or she, she was comforting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are this, you are this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will never humiliate you. Abu Bakr also, when someone has described him, Ibn Daghina, when he described Abu Bakr and his characteristics, he has mentioned something that was very similar to the Prophet Sallallahu characteristics. So him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, their personalities were very similar. Subhanallah, their personalities were very, very similar. 
they were very alike. So now Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and as soon as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became a prophet, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has accepted Islam. As soon as the Prophet sallallahu told him that he was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa taala, he became he became he became a Muslim. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, one of the unique things about him was he started giving da'wah immediately after he became a Muslim. And not only that, he has attracted some big names, some big names to the religion of Islam. Five, five of the companions who have been given the glad tidings of going to Jannah before they have even passed away, five of them, they became Muslim through Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And these five include Uthman ibn Affan. Who's going to take the ajr of Uthman ibn Affan? Everything great that Uthman ibn Affan, Affan radiallahu anhu has done will be in the account of Abu Bakr. That's why no one will ever be able to match Abu Bakr. He will have the ajr of Uthman ibn Affan. He will have the ajr of Abu Ubaid Amir ibn al-Jarrah. He's going to have the ajr of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. He's going to have the ajr of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. He's going to have the ajr of Az-Zuwayr ibn al-Awwam. Subhanallah. They became Muslims through him. So to look at the importance of giving da'wah. Each and every one of us right now, we should be saying, okay, I have to work hard to help someone become Muslim. That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to say to Ali, has said to Ali radiallahu anhu, لِأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides through you one person, subhanAllah, is better than the red camels that were very valued at that time. So whatever we can have in this world, it's not going to be similar to helping someone become a Muslim, subhanAllah. So we have to try our best to help people be guided to our religion. So each and every one of us, when we go out, we are all ambassadors of, Islam, ambassadors of Islam. Abu Bakr, as soon as he became Muslim, he didn't say, okay, I have to learn the whole Quran. I need to study so much. No, he gave da'wah straight away, immediately after he became a Muslim. Okay, he told people about Islam. Each one of us, alhamdulillah, we know enough to call the people to Islam. So this is very, very important. So something that we can learn from the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Also, what we are going to remind ourselves is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu defended the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the religion of Islam from the beginning. And inshallah ta'ala, we are going to mention things regarding this matter bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. But inshallah ta'ala, before we before we mention this uh, particular um, issue in the light ta'ala, we are going to remind some of the incidents that involved Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu during the early times of Islam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, for example, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, for example, he was one of the companions who have, okay, Abu Bakr has never left Mecca and made hijrah, for example, to Habasha, to Abyssinia. There was a time when he attempted to leave Okay, he felt like Mecca was very hostile. He couldn't stay in Mecca anymore. He wanted to leave. And one of the leaders of Mecca, Ibn al-Daghina, he saw Abu Bakr leaving and he returned him back to Mecca. He said, someone like you can never be kicked out of this city. Okay, you are a great man. A great man like you, how can we put him into exile? There's no way. So I want you to come back and I'm going to give you asylum. Okay, no one is going to touch you as long as you hold on to the conditions. So that was one thing. Also, Inshallah ta'ala, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he defended the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Physically, there was a time when, subhanallah, Uqbata ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, the evil guy from Quraysh, he has attacked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he attacked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr was there, Abu Bakr defended the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Abu Bakr got beaten up so much that people felt that he was going to die. He was left for dead. People thought Khalas is going to die. Especially his tribe, Banu Tayyim. Banu Tayyim. They picked him up. They took him to his parents' house. And they have said, if, they have said, if Abu Bakr dies, we're going to, get, we're going to kill Utbah for him. We're going to kill Utbah for the death of Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he has regained his consciousness, what do you think was the first question he asked? The first question he asked was, how is the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at the love that he had for the Prophet. He said, how's the Prophet? He didn't, ask, he didn't think about himself. He didn't say, how am I? What happened to me? Okay, who tried to kill me? And, and uh, am I okay? Uh, give me some food, give me water. He didn't say any of that. He said, how's the Prophet sallallahu And his mother who was sat with him, she said to him like, we don't know how he's doing your friend. We don't know what happened to him. And, and, and then after that, the, Abu Bakr, he did not rest 
until he met with the Prophet Sallallahu while he was in that state. He was not even able to walk. Two women had to take him to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mother and the sister of Umar ibn al-Khattab. They had to help him. They had to drag him to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or where the Prophet was staying at that time. So, he was, so when he sees the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he felt comfortable that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was okay and then he went back. Subhanallah. So Abu Bakr, you can see the love that he had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as we will come to see insha'Allah ta'ala, the, 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 the virtues of Abu Bakr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Abu Bakr in the Quran. A few times. There are certain verses in the Quran that the ulama of tafsir, they have said, these ayat are talking about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. One of them is the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا So who was the person who was in the cave with the Prophet as he was escaping the city of Mecca? Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه And he was the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about him. The Prophet said to him, لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا Okay, don't be sad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Also, the surah that we recited in our salah. Who can remember the first, the first surah that I recited in the first rak'ah? The, the surah that I've recited in the first rak'ah tonight. Let's see if we can remember. Brother Khalid. MashaAllah. Specifically, you mentioned the ayah as well. MashaAllah, that is beautiful. Okay, surah to layl. وَلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَى So, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he has spent... A lot of his wealth freeing some of the weak companions, some of the companions who were slaves in Mecca, who has freed them, who had set them free, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he bought them, such as, such as Bilal radiallahu anhu, subhanallah, Bilal, who bought him and set him free, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, subhanallah, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا So these ayat, they're talking about Abu Bakr. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about, وَلَا يَأْتَلِي أُولُوا الْفَضْلِ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولُوا الْقُرْبَى When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about, at the end of the hadith al-ifk, when Aisha was... When people slandered Aisha radiallahu anha and they've accused her of, of committing zina, one of the people who spread that information was Mistah. And Mistah was related to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr used to support him financially. And guess what happened? When this rumor began, Mistah, subhanallah, he was a great companion. He, he has, subhanallah, he participated in the battle of Badr. Just, he lost it at that particular moment. The munafiqoon got the better of him. And he started spreading the information, the, the, the wrong information that Aisha committed zina. Subhanallah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Subhanallah, amma yaquluna uluwan kabira. And then what happened? Abu Bakr, when the ayat were revealed, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that Aisha was free from this, Abu Bakr became very upset and enraged and said, there is no way I'm going to support Mistah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. Forgive Mistah. وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ And Abu Bakr said, I have forgiven him. Subhanallah. You can see, look, look at Abu Bakr. He used to act upon the Quran. As soon as the ayat come down, he will act upon them and said, خلاص, I'm going to forgive because I love Allah. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. And also there are a hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and has mentioned and, and um, virtues regarding Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And inshallah ta'ala, some of the hadith that we're going to mention and uh, regarding the virtues of the great companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Among, among the hadith is the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, لو كنت متخذا من أمتي خليلا لاتخذت أبا بكر خليلا. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if I were to take someone as a dear friend from my ummah, I would have taken Abu Bakr. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will let it takhadani khalila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taken me as the best, as, as, as a best friend. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who has taken me as his best friend. So right now, as you can see, mashallah, the virtues of Abu Bakr are so limitless. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to mention other hadith as well. There was a time, subhanallah, there was a time when there was an incident between Abu Bakr and Umar. Look at the companions, they were human beings. Okay, the companions were not infallible. Okay, they were normal human beings. Sometimes they made mistakes. Abu Bakr caused Umar to become very upset with him. Abu Bakr has done something to Umar or said something to Umar and Umar felt that he was wronged. And Umar anhu became upset. And Umar walked off and walked away from Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr chased Umar, ran after Umar and said to him, please forgive me. I have wronged you. I know that I've wronged you. Imagine Abu Bakr, okay, and upsetting Umar radiallahu anhu. These are great people. 
however great someone is sometimes, they might actually slip up. They might do something. They might say something that's not befitting. So Umar anhu felt that he was wronged and he left and walked, 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 walked away. And Abu Bakr chased him and ran after him and said, and Umar, please forgive me. Please forgive me. But Abu Bakr, Umar was so upset at that moment, he didn't forgive him. He, he closed his doors. Like he went to his house and closed the door on the face of Abu Bakr. He said, I'm not going to talk to you. Khalas, I'm not going to forgive you right now. And Abu Bakr felt so bad. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell what has happened. Ya Rasulullah, this has happened between me and Abu Bakr, me and Umar. And Umar is upset with me right now. And I asked him to forgive me, but he hasn't. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... And then what do you think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has done? Right now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's going to become very upset. Very upset. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam becomes upset. Is he going to become upset with Abu Bakr or is he going to become upset with Umar? Is he going to become upset with Umar? Subhanallah. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he, how he stands up for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And look at what he says. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right now, he said, أَمَّا صَاحِبُكُمْ فَقَدْ غَامَرَ Meaning Abu Bakr anhu, he embraced Islam from the first opportunity. As soon as he was told about Islam, he has joined Islam. He became a Muslim. He has embraced Islam. And Abu Bakr subhanallah, look at what he said. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has said, Ya Rasulallah, wallahi ana kuntu adlam. I, I was the one who did the wrong. Subhanallah. I was the one who upset Umar, Ya Rasulallah. Don't be upset with him. It was my fault. He has admitted it. He said, it was my fault, Ya Rasulullah. Don't be upset with Umar. And then the Prophet is going to mention the reason why he became upset for the sake of Abu Bakr. He said, Inna Allah ba'athani ilaykum faqultum kathabt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent me to you guys. And you all said to me, you are lying. Waqala Abu Bakr sadaqt. Abu Bakr said to me, you are telling the truth. When all of you were against me, guys, Abu Bakr was on my side. He said, you are telling the truth. Subhanallah. And also he said, Abu Bakr has taken care of me. And also, Abu Bakr has taken care of me with his wealth. Do you know, Abu Bakr, his, he put his wealth where his mouth was. Subhanallah. He gave so much for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَارِكُوا لِي صَاحِبِي Are you going to leave my friend alone? So he means Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is my friend. Leave him alone. And then, after that, the Prophet ﷺ also has said, أَيُّهَا nas." قلت يا أيها الناس إني رسول الله إليكم جميعا فقلتم كذبت وقال أبو بكر صدقت سبحان الله. so أبو بكر said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when as soon as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was sent as a prophet he has accepted him and said you are telling the truth يا رسول الله. so these are some of the virtues of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه. also another virtue of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه is the following there was a time when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has asked the companions all the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said the doors of Jannah, the gates of Jannah. People will be invited through different gates of Jannah, through the different gates of Jannah. And there will be some, and the, Allah, the Prophet has said, some people, they will be invited through the gate of Salah. Some of them, they will be invited through the gate of uh, Siyam and so forth. And the, through the gate of Jad and so forth. And then Abu Bakr has asked and said, Ya Rasulullah, will there be someone who will be actually invited through all the gates? And then the Prophet has said, yes, and I hope that you are one of them. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he will be invited through the gates of Jannah. Any gate will be open for him. You can come through Jannah, you can come to Jannah, enter Jannah through any of the gates that you want. All the gate, all the eight gates of Jannah. Also, remember this, subhanAllah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, these are some of his amazing virtues. And we can continue and continue all night. Also, Ali radiallahu anhu, Ali, this is very important. We have to remember. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was asked who was the best of the companions. And this has to be something that you should remember, all of us right now, yeah? Because we, we know there are people, okay, who believe that Abu Bakr and Umar, for example, they became disbelievers. Imagine, imagine someone who believes that. But as, as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we believe the companions, they are the best of the people after the prophets. Subhanallah. And Abu Bakr and Umar, they are the best of the Ummah. And Ali radiallahu anhu himself, when he was asked by, by his son, Muhammad ibn al-Hanifiyyah, when he asked him and said to him, who was the best of the companions? Ayyu nasi khayrun ba'da Rasulillah? He said to his father, Muhammad ibn al-Hanifiyyah said to his father, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said to him, 
أي الناس خير بعد رسول الله who was the best of the people after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said Abu Bakr and who's saying this Ali رضي الله عنه Ali said Abu Bakr was the best of us no one was as good as him and then he said to him ثم من that who was second best after after him he said Umar and then Muhammad ibn Hanafiya said I I was afraid that maybe he's going to say Uthman and then I said to him ثم أنت يا he said to his father what about you where were you and then look at Ali how, what he said. He said, "Ma ana illa rajulun min al-Muslimin." I was just one of the Muslims. Humility. Ali didn't say like I was the fourth best or fifth best or this. He said I was just one of the Muslims. Okay. Look at the humbleness, humility of the companions. Mashallah. So you can see, Mashallah, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, how he was regarded and he was highly regarded among the companions. And also right now we are going to remind ourselves the knowledge of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his knowledge superseded the knowledge of the rest of the companions. And we'll give a couple of examples. Remember Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, remember when the Prophet sallam signed the peace treaty of Al, the, the, peace, the peace treaty of Al Hudaybiyah, the companions, they felt that that was unfair treaty. And one of the people, one of the companions who felt so upset with that treaty was Umar radiallahu anhu. And Umar became so enraged and he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, are we not upon the truth? Are we not upon the, upon the truth? Why have you accepted this peace treaty? And then he went to complain to Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr told him, Ya Umar, he's the Prophet of Allah. He's the Messenger of Allah. Okay, Allah has sent him. Okay, and he knows what he's doing. Okay, hold on to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do not deviate from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Stay upon, be steadfast upon the path. And you can see Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was the one who used to calm Umar radiallahu anhu sometimes if he becomes upset, okay, with something. He was the one who had more knowledge than him. So he, he would calm Abu Umar radiallahu anhu. Also, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, at the end of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Abu Bakr, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to die, Abu Bakr stayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr stayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was nursing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taking care of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the moment when he left, when he felt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was feeling better, Abu Bakr left and went, went back to his house. While he was away, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. And then we know what has happened. Umar radiallahu anhu wasn't able to accept that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. Abu Bakr came back and Abu Bakr, when he came back and he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, he came out from the room of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he stood in front of the people. And Umar was threatening the companions at that moment. And he was saying, if anyone says that the Prophet sallallahu is dead, I'm going to kill him. And Abu Bakr came out. And Abu Bakr started talking to the people. Look at how eloquent he was. He recited the verse. He said, before he recited the verse, he said, مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتُ he said, anyone who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, man kana ya'budu Muhammad, and anyone who used to worship Muhammad, Muhammad has passed away. Anyone who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is ever living. He will never die. Subhanallah. And then he recited, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, the Ansar, the companions who came from Medina, they sat together. They wanted to form a government and, and choose a leader. And who has heard that information? Abu Bakr, Umar, and Abu Ubaidah. And they went over to the meeting place where the Ansar were meeting. And who has told the Ansar who the, who the, who the Khalifa should be? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He told them. He, there was a hadith which he has heard from the Prophet sallallahu And he shared that hadith with them. And then the Ansar have said, now yeah, we want someone from the Quraysh to be the leader. And Abu Bakr, he did not put himself at the front. He didn't say like, I want you to elect me. No, he said, elect Umar. Abu Ubaidah. And Umar has said, there is no way I'm going to become a leader ahead of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu chose you to be our imam in the salah before he passed away. How can I be your leader today? Look at the importance of being the imam in the salah. So being the, the imam for the salah is something so powerful, subhanAllah. So look at, Umar has said, there is no way I'm going to put myself ahead of someone whom the Prophet sallallahu has chosen to be our imam in the salah. And then Abu Bakr was elected in that moment. And when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was elected, what's going to happen is the following. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is going to tell the companions what he's going to do. Okay, how he's going to lead as a leader. Abu Bakr is going to say to them, 
I am going to be someone who follows, who follows the path of the Prophet sallallahu And I'm not going to be someone who's going to innovate and commit innovation. Okay, I'm going to follow the path of the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also he reminds the companions. Okay, if I am on the straight path, okay, help me. But if I deviate from the path, correct me as well. So Abu Bakr radhiallahu anhu, you can see his style of leadership, and also we are going to remind ourselves. As soon as Abu Bakr became the leader, what do you think he did? Do you think he just kind of like uh, he just sat down and relaxed? and just started getting a salary and, and, and just sitting down and chilling out. Abu Bakr, the next day, as soon as he was elected, the next day, when the bay'ah was given to him, okay? When the bay'ah was given to him, what is he going to do? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he's going out in the market to continue to buy and sell because he was a business person. He, used, he went out to earn money for his family. And who's going to see him? Umar radiallahu anhu and Abu Ubaidah. And they're going to say to him, Ya Ya Khalifa ta Rasulillah, how come that you're outside and you are busy selling, buying, okay? You are our leader. And he said to them, who's going to feed my family if I don't work and earn money? And they said to him, no, we're going to give you a salary from the Bayt al-Mal. You are our Amir, now you are our Khalifa. You are the Khalifa of the Prophet sallallahu Now you have to sit down, okay? And we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you a salary for what? your salary, your daily salary, and it's going to be this amount, and you're going to take care of your family with that salary, and also you're going to focus on the ummah and what the ummah needs. And then Abu Bakr, he refuses at the beginning, he says, no, I don't want to do this, but they're going to force him to do that, accept that. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu accepts it. So right now, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he's the leader of the believers. So the last part, I am going to talk about the injazat. What were the the great things that Abu Bakr has achieved as a leader, as a Khalifa. Remember, this is going to be a summarized version of the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And the reason I'm making it so summarized is in order for you to go back to the books and study the lives of these great companions extensively on your own. Do you know, there are many books that have been written about the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Hundreds of books have been written about the life of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And subhanAllah, great ulama have written books about him, about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So now we're going to talk about, finally, some of the great achievements of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. One of the achievements, so you should know these things. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, him accepting to be the first khalifa, that in and of itself was something very important for the ummah. Imagine if Abu Bakr said, I don't want to become the khalifa. Okay, that could have been a problematic. But Abu Bakr has accepted when he was pushed and, he would, and Abu Umar and, Abu Ubaidah and the rest of the companions said, to him, you have to become the Khalifa. He has accepted it. So that was a great achievement. Second, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he has sent the army of Usama ibn Zayd. There was an army that the Prophet sallam, has put together and organized before he passed away. But when the Prophet sallam, became very sick, that army never left the city of Medina. The army stayed and who was leading this army? Usama ibn Zayd, a young companion. He was only 18 years old. And the Prophet ﷺ put him in charge of the army. That army included Abu Bakr, Umar, people like them. People like them. And he was only 18 years old. And he was the general of the army that time. The Prophet ﷺ elected him. But when the Prophet ﷺ fell ill and became very unwell, what has happened? The army stayed until the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. And now what has happened? As soon as the Prophet ﷺ died, Many of the Arab tribes, they left the religion of Islam. Many of them, they left the religion of Islam. Only three cities remained as Muslims. Mecca, Medina, and Taif. Only those three cities. The rest of the, the Arab tribes, they have left the religion of Islam. They said, we are no longer Muslims. And now, the companions in Medina, the, the senior companions, they have said to Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, leave the army of Usama. Let them stay in Medina. They have to protect the city of Medina. Now we are exposed. If we are attacked by all these tribes, we're going to be overwhelmed. So let us protect the city. Abu Bakr has said, there's no way I'm going to do that. Um, there's no way that I'm going to stop an army that the Prophet has prepared. And he wanted them to go and, 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 and fulfill a, a mission. I'm going to send them away. And that's exactly what Abu Bakr has done. And that was a great victory for the Muslims. When the Arab tribes, they saw Abu Bakr sending this army from the city of Medina, what happened to them? Look at the psychology. They felt like the Muslims in Medina are so powerful. 
there was hardly any men left when this army was sent. Only a few companions were behind, who were left behind in Medina. Majority of the companions, they were part of this army. But Abu Bakr has insisted and said, there's no way I'm going to go against the Prophet I'm going to follow the Sunnah of the And the army came back victorious. And they've done a great job. So this is one of the achievements of, of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Also, Abu Bakr fought against all the tribes that left Islam until they came back to the religion. He fought against them. And even those who denied to give the zakah, he fought against them. Also, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was the one who has started the conquest of Asham and the conquest of Faris. Subhanallah. He was the, the Khalifa who has started all of those conquests, mashallah. So that was another amazing, mashallah, and achievement of Abu Bakr. Another amazing achievement of Abu Bakr is what? The compilation of the Quran. The Quran was compiled during the time of Abu Bakr for the first time. Remember what happened in the battle of Yamama. There was a great battle that happened between the Muslims and those who have left Islam, especially Musaylamatul Kadhab and his people. Musaylamatul Kadhab, he has said, I'm a prophet. Musaylamatul Kadhab, he was from Yamama, and he had a strong army of 20,000 men from the tribe of Banu Hanifa. Khalid ibn al Walid, imagine Khalid ibn al Walid feeling that he was so close to die. Khalid ibn al Walid has said, There was no battle that has, I, I, I ever got involved where I have felt that I was about to die, except the battle of Yamama. Khalid ibn al-Walid said, the resistance that I've met with that, that I've met, subhanAllah, against my enemies, that resistance was, was unbelievable. He said, I felt that I was going to die that day. The battle of Yamama. Many of the companions were killed, especially those who memorized the Quran. So Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman came back to the city of Medina and said to Umar, Umar was the advisor of Abu Bakr, he said to him, we need to compile the Quran because the Hufad are dying. The people who memorize the Quran, they are, they're dying right now. They're being martyred. We need, to, we, need to, we need to compile the Quran. Abu Bakr at the beginning, he has resisted that. He said, I'm not going to do something that the Prophet ﷺ hasn't done. You can see how strong Abu Bakr was when it comes to following the path of the Prophet He said, I'm not going to do it. Until Umar anhu has convinced him at the end, the importance of doing this. And now what happened? The Quran is going to be compiled for the first time. The whole Quran. In one place. During the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So that's another achievement of, mashallah, Abu Bakr. Another great achievement of Abu Bakr is what? Him electing Umar to be the leader after him. This was very, very important. Abu Bakr, before he passed away, when he felt like he was going to die, he consulted the senior companions, such as Uthman ibn Affan, such as uh, Abu Ubaidah, such as uh, Talha, and so forth. He, he consulted them, and he said to them, what do you think, who should become the leader after I pass away? Okay. And he had in mind Umar radiallahu anhu. He wanted Umar to be the leader. Okay. So he has elected Umar and said, if I, if I die, the next person, the person who's going to come, the leader, become the leader after me, that person has to be uh, Umar radiallahu anhu. So that was uh, an important choice that, uh, the, the, the choice that Abu Bakr has made, which was great for the ummah. And finally, I'm just going to mention Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when is it that he died? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has died only, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has died just a couple of years. Two years and three months, two years and four months after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has passed away. You can see Abu Bakr did not live very long after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was only alive for two years and three months or two years or four months. That's it. After that, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has passed away. Can I have the... Uh, wireless and mic inshallah ta'ala from the media team now i want you inshallah ta'ala brothers to give us in the light ta'ala and uh, your own reflection in the light ta'ala and uh, brother ahmed rimi is going to and uh, help the brothers if any brother wants to say uh, a point or two inshallah ta'ala self reflection inshallah ta'ala something that is relatable to you mashallah something that you are trying to inshallah ta'ala uh, practice, inshallah ta'ala, after this uh, talk, be the ta'ala. So, any brother, you can raise your hand and uh, make a comment, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, this brother here. We have a brother here, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, inshallah. Zakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. I think one of the things I've, I've learned from from the story of Abu Bakr yeah. 
May Allah be pleased with him. Is yeah. that if we want to love the Prophet the way he's he's he he's uh, he should be loved, we need to learn about. Allah Akbar. Very good. Yes, the importance of, of loving will depend on how much we know. Mashallah. If you want to love someone and you want to love them so much, it depend. It will depend how much you know. Mashallah. How much you know that person. Very good. Excellent. Very important. Mashallah. And any other brother who wants to, Mashallah, brother Muhammad Aziz. Mashallah. Assalamualaikum. Uh, we want to hear from you, mashallah. Yeah. I've learned that uh, in order to be a mu'min, we have to believe, like, um, we, we have to know the life story of uh, Abu Bakr, Omar, Omar mashallah. Uthman, mashallah. Ali. Mashallah, those great but people. But the most uh, close companion to Rasulullah is Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, absolutely. We have to know his biography, read absolutely. about him absolutely. from different ulama, so we can compile the best. Mashallah, mashallah. wonderful. Jazakallah khair. So encouraging people to explore more. Mashallah, very nice. Excellent, mashallah. Who's going to be... The next brother who wants to, mashallah. Yes, mashallah. Hayakallah. Yeah, um, I just want to talk about uh, Abu Bakr when um, he was uh, being elected. Uh, he didn't take the advantage to gain money from the Absolute, Muslims. Absolutely. Therefore, he went to go and work by himself. Absolutely. But now we see him too many people. Oh, okay. It's the opposite, yes. As soon as he becomes, yeah. <laughs> mashallah, so as soon as someone uh, becomes like a leader, or, oh, yes, they want to make money from, from that, mashallah. Ashallah, barakallah fiq. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Yes. Um, I think our great things we can learn from here, especially yeah. this applies nowadays as well, is yeah. friendship. Who is your friend? Allahu Akbar. Inna sahib, sahib sahib. Allahu Akbar. So uh, your friend can shape your characteristic and shape the way you act, the way you Ma behave. And uh, as Abu Bakr, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, was very close to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mashallah. He actually get a lot from his behavior and uh, the way he behaved, the way he actually treat people. So this is very important. Uh, who is your friend? MashaAllah. Very good. The importance of choosing the right people to become your friends, MashaAllah. They will shape your behavior and your character, MashaAllah. Wonderful point, MashaAllah. Excellent. MashaAllah. And uh, Brother Tariq. Brother Tariq there, yes, MashaAllah. Brother Tariq. A personal lesson, MashaAllah, from, from the lesson of Abu Bakr, عنه, the life of Abu Bakr. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Mashallah, it's very good when uh, do you know about the perfect uh, story and that. But uh, Allah as well mentioned in the Quran, مثل الذين حمل التورات حمل التورات ثم لم يحملوها ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أسفار. ليس مثل القوم الذين لا يعملون. كذبوا بعية الله. أتأمرون الناس بالبر. وتنسون أنفسكم. وأنتم وتنسون أنتم تتلون الكتاب. So the important is you know something you have to follow and you have to doing as well. It's very important. Absolutely. ما شاء الله. الله خير. الله خير. برضو تارك. برضو تارك is reminding us the importance of acting upon what we are learning. ما شاء الله. We are learning new things. We have to act upon them. ما شاء الله. Very important. ما شاء الله. Another brother who wants to contribute. MashaAllah, Brother Farooq, just behind you. Yeah, Kashara. Assalamu alaikum. I learned from this great story of the great companion Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhum that we have to give more in charity. MashaAllah. Because um, there was a time the Prophet was trying to raise um, money and funds for battle, and Abu Bakr gave all of his wealth. MashaAllah, absolutely. And the Prophet asked, What has he left behind? Mashallah. He said, He has left Allah behind for his family. Allahu Akbar. So, inshallah, what I have learned is personally, yeah. I have to give more charity and help mashallah. more Muslims, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah khair. That's wonderful. MashaAllah. The last minute, be in the light, Allah. Brother, brother Muhammad, yes. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum um, salam. Personally, what I've learned from this is. Um, the ability for us to practice the religion according to what the Prophet and his companions did. Mashallah. Like the way you mentioned when he said Mashallah. the Prophet did not compile the Quran, he's Mashallah. not going to do that. Mashallah. But he ended up doing this is the ability to show us that we should practice the religion according to the Sunnah. And what the, uh, the Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. So Alhamdulillah, the Adhan is upon us right now. Mashallah. Yes. I just want to say something. Yes. Uh, Wallahi, you know what? I've been yes. coming to the masjid for Mashallah. a long, long time. Mashallah. And um, it, it grieves me sometimes that yeah. the brothers come in and wallahi, the, the etiquette and the manhaj yes, of, the, of the people that come in, yeah. it needs to be questioned, Akhi, because we're trying to listen to you, we're trying to listen to the brothers, yes, and yes, we've got chat going on uh, at the back. Okay, mashallah. You know what? Come on, a bit of etiquette, a bit mashallah. of manners. Okay, if we, mashallah. If we're, if we're, if we're, if we're going to come together as the ummah, yeah. as Muslims, 
Subhanallah. You know, but, we need to we need to kind of. Mashallah. That, that's another you know? another important point. Jazakallah khair. Um, and, uh, it, we should put that into practice. Me. It grieves me that Mashallah. every day I hear this and then phone calls going off. Okay. You know, Mashallah. while we're praying, Subhanallah. Man. Okay. It's, it's on there. It's on there. Yes. Please. please, please. Khair. I implore the brothers. Okay. Jazakallah. Bit of common sense. Mashallah. Jazakallah khair. And Inshallah Taala, hopefully we'll. Act upon that bidding, like Ta'ala. We have to try our utmost best to practice that, inshallah Ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. So, this is the end of our lesson. Abu Bakr, next week, who are we going, look, who are we going to be looking forward to? Umar radiallahu anhu. Jazakumullah khairan. As you can see, the format of the lesson, you'll be talking at the end, inshallah Ta'ala. Hayakumullah wa biyakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.